Well, good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday after Epiphany. So glad that you could join us for worship today. I looked outside early and went, look like it snowed. So there's a little skip of snow out there, but nothing we can't handle. I actually saw people moving snow and I'm like, it's hardly enough to even do anything with people, but whatever. Just some announcements to share with you as we gather this morning. First of all, um, tomorrow is uh, Martin Luther King Day, a federal holiday, so our offices will be closed, just so you don't think we're bugging out for no reason. But if you need something, please leave a message or give me a call on my cell phone and I'll be around. You should have received in your email over the weekend, uh, I think it went out, part went out Thursday, part went out Friday, all the information for our annual meeting. If you did not receive that or you would like a printed copy, please let Erin know in the office. And also related to that packet going out, this is kind of the official notice that um, the constitutionally required annual meeting of the congregation is set for Sunday, January 31st at 1 p.m. to elect um, a church council, to approve a budget, and all other matters that need to come before the congregation. All voting members and folks who hang out with us are invited to be part of that. It will have to be by Zoom because we are not permitted to have large gatherings. And I can't implore you enough, please come. We have to have a quorum in order to conduct business. So please, please, please make an effort to be there. I will be sending out a Zoom link next week so it doesn't get too buried in your emails. If you do not have it by, let's say, Wednesday, please give me a call and I will get you one. You do not have to be on the computer to use Zoom. You can call in on the phone and there's information on the Zoom link on how to do that. So please um, help us, help us together be church and be part of that. I'm looking on everything I wrote on my little cheat sheet here and I think that's the only announcements I have for those of you who are regular attenders of St. Paul. With that, then I would invite us to take just a couple moments to center ourselves as we begin our worship. Hmm. Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, your sins are washed away and you are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, you are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community of Christ's justice, beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. I invite the kids to come forward so you can see a little bit more. I don't have anything to show you today, so as long as you can hear and kind of see me, you might be okay. Because I couldn't figure out how to bring this. 
the other day, a person that I follow on Instagram, I, she almost feels like my friend, but we've never met, posted that she was going to do a live video cooking something. Now, I'm always up for somebody cooking something. What's your favorite thing to eat? Maybe it's mac and cheese. Maybe pizza. What about hot dogs? Any other things you really like to eat? Well, she said she was going to be serving this thing called Migos. Uh -huh. What's Migos? Never heard of it. I thought, oh, it's going to be one of them strange dishes. And I almost didn't watch her. Then I did. And you know what Migos is? <laughs> it's basically fancy scrambled eggs. It's a, it's a Mexican version of it. You put you scrambled eggs and you put tortilla shells and cheese and avocado and whatever else you need in it. And then you scramble it all up and you eat it. You put some salsa on it and you eat it. And I'm like, but duh, I can do that. <laughs> but you know what? If I hadn't have watched her and saw a picture of what she was cooking, I'd have never known what Migas was. Hmm. Gets me thinking of something that happens in our lessons today. We have two different people, but I'm going to talk mainly about the second person. His name is Nathaniel. And he'd heard all about this guy, Jesus. But he didn't believe him. He thought, oh, who's that guy? I don't need to worry about him. Until Philip said, well, come and see. And then make your mind up. And you know what? When he actually went and saw Jesus, he believed in him and followed him. Sometimes it's hard to explain things and we just have to see it. We still, we just have to believe. Like, I mean, did you know what school was before you went to school? In our lives, we just sometimes have to try things, especially when we're with somebody we really trust. See, Nathaniel really trusted Philip. So that's why I went with him to see. So I hope the people in your lives help you experience new and different things because you never know what's out there until you get to. Thank I invite you to pray for me. Lord Jesus, thank you for people who are special to us, people we can trust to follow and to come and to see and experience. Thank you for sending Philip to Nathaniel so he could come and see Jesus. Help us to invite others to be with us and to come and see and be part of the things we find exciting. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us always. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. We're going to sing our opening song here, and I invite you to be part of that. First hymn is, If You But Trust in God to Guide You.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. We're going to sing a hymn of praise this morning, and that is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Samuel, the third chapter. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Word of God, word for life. Thanks be to God. Our responsive 
reading this day or psalm is from Psalm 139, Selected Verses. Lord, you have searched me out. O oh, Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my innermost parts and you knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. My eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my life span would need to be like yours. Here ends our song. Our gospel reading this day is from John's gospel, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. He found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Ah, and so it starts. You know, one thing all of the Gospels agree on is that one of the first things Jesus does as he begins his earthly ministry is he calls people to follow him, to be his disciples. And today we have the first of a few call stories that we'll look at in these Sundays after Epiphany. Jesus may be the Son of God and divine and all that, but the one thing he is not is a lone wolf. Essential for Jesus is bringing others with him in his public ministry. But we shouldn't be all that surprised about that. I mean, if it's public, that means people. So you somehow you got to get people involved in this. So how do people get in? How do they get in on this Jesus thing? How do you get to be part of this life-changing work that God's doing? Well, first of all, realize that Jesus isn't doing anything wildly new here. He kind of stands in consort with the way God has always worked to call people. No matter what specific time you're looking at, whether it's that call of the young Samuel in the Old Testament or Jesus, you know, calling his first disciples, the one thing you notice is that nobody gets in without God's initiative. For Samuel, it's that voice calling in the night. He can't identify it, but Eli can, because Eli knows God's voice and helps the young boy Samuel come to recognize it.
for the would-be disciples. It's Jesus walking up to them and calling them by name and offering them an opportunity of a lifetime. We even kind of get a second tier of that calling thing when Philip talks to Nathaniel. Philip has heard Jesus' call and he's responded. Now he goes and does likewise, offering that initiative that invitation, come and see. None of these people go knocking on God's proverbial door, demanding to get in. See, we don't find God. God finds us. Being called, doing outreach, listening for God's prompting, being a disciple, offering invitations, all wonderful ways to kind of think about this text today. But I'm not going to preach on any of those. <laughs> because what has been kind of gnawing at me this week as I've been studying and praying over this text is the interchange that happens between Nathaniel and Jesus. It's kind of particular to this call narrative. My guess is part of why that's nagging on me is that I specifically I suspect that most of us would act exactly the way Nathaniel does if we were in his shoes. Because unlike all the other people Jesus calls, Nathaniel doesn't immediately drop everything and go running after Jesus. Matter of fact, he's kind of skeptical of Jesus and what he's asking of people. Now, Philip has excitedly you know, proclaimed a nation. We found him. We found him. We have the one that's been promised. It's Jesus. You know, that Jesus guy, the son of Joseph, who used to live in Nazareth. Oh, you got to come. You got to come. Oh, this is so exciting. And instead of immediately heading out, Nathaniel instead tells Philip that Jesus can't be the guy. Because, well, he's from the wrong side of the tracks. Think Jeff Foxworthy and his Jokes of, you know you're a redneck if, and you kind of get an idea of how Nazareth was viewed by those outside the area. But you know what? Unfortunately, that kind of prejudice isn't limited to first century Palestine. It runs rampant in our own society. We've seen it tragically play out in recent days. There are places we don't go because those people live there. We get frustrated when we have to deal with somebody who speaks differently than we do. I received an email and some social media posts yesterday from reliable sources like bishops <laughs> and other pastors warning churches who are streaming from their buildings not to do so this morning because of domestic terrorist threats that had been made against churches viewed as more liberal. I trust that our community is better than that. We are called together and we cannot let differences tear us apart. Our community won't survive if we do. So in light of all that, I guess I get Nathaniel's response. Can anything good come from? Insert your favorite marginalized community there. Now to his credit, Philip doesn't try and argue or even answer Nathaniel's questions. He doesn't make excuses, doesn't explain things. He simply says, come and see. He knew he couldn't change Nathaniel's skepticism so he simply suggested that Nathaniel come and see for himself and then decide. That's when things get interesting. Because Jesus meets Nathaniel and he makes the comment, here is this Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And tells Nathaniel he saw him hanging out by a fig tree. And Nathaniel is so blown away by that statement that he declares that this guy standing in front of him is the son of God and the king of Israel. His skepticism flips to discipleship like that. Now, one thing that might help here a little bit is in Jesus' day, that phrase being under the fig tree 
was often used by rabbis the way we might talk about having a quiet time, to refer figuratively to being in prayer or meditation. So Jesus is saying, hey, I saw you praying. I heard you talking to God. You see, Nathaniel thought his prayer was personal, only between he and God, and now here's Jesus who knows it all. And that changes Nathaniel's mind. Jesus, though, is a bit kind of amused by this. And he basically says, really? That's all it took? Say, I saw you under a fig tree and now you believe? Hmm. <laughs> if that's all you want, just wait. You are going to be blown away, Nathaniel. He assures Nathaniel that even in his skepticism, he is still loved. But you know, as we identify with Nathaniel, some tough questions get posed for us. Is our vision of Jesus limited as well? Are we so impressed by the small things that we can't fathom the greater things God is doing in our life or what God has in store? Is Jesus too confined? For instance, like if you're praying for something, especially something big in your life, do you expect God to answer it? Now, I don't want to short circuit our theology here because we do indeed earnestly pray, not my will, but thy will be done. Yet I have to ask, do you believe that God wants to lavish on you grace and abundance, wholeness and acceptance? Do you believe that God can really take on our major, major circumstances and change them? Do you believe that God can take the worst sin and cleanse it? Cleanse you? Cleanse us? Are you keeping your standards kind of low so that just about any crumb will do? Animals, when they've been starved, they will snap and snip and grab any crumb they can and will attack other animals. They do it to survive. Do we view our discipleship and our prayer life, our Christian walk the same way? Don't get your hopes up because God just might disappoint you. Nathaniel's picture of Jesus was small and Jesus invited him to come and see and be blown away. Jesus invited Nathaniel to see God's majesty play out in Jesus' own life, death, and resurrection. Each healing, each freeing of the demonic, from the demonic spirits, each lesson taught reinforced that God cares and is restoring all things, including our divine relationship. Jesus' resurrection is the big exclamation point on it. God is still in the blowing away business. Jesus does not call us to come and fight over crumbs, but to come and see the bounty of God. Doesn't mean there won't be challenging times or that every prayer will be answered the way we want. What it does mean is that the heaven is open and that we're invited to see the power and glory of God active now in our world, changing it, changing us. It's a huge picture of an even bigger God who still knows your name. Please pray with me. Holy, expansive, nurturing God, every time we learn something new about our world, how truly vast and complex it is, our image, our knowledge, our experience of you grows. We stand in awe of even the smallest part of you that we know and can only imagine what's yet to come. Keep us from shrinking that image, from making you too manageable, and open us up to the amazing great things you are about. Give us the courage to invite others to come and see and be as amazed as well. 
As they are in accord with your will, O God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing in response to the word, Lord be glorified. Please join me in sharing our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn our hearts to prayer. Each petition will end with, let us pray, and I invite you to respond back. Have mercy, O God. Let us pray for the whole church according to their needs. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church live out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, for all that God has marvelously made, that we may serve as wide stewards of the earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, especially our own as we, as Inauguration Day nears, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who would do harm, that your spirit would change their hearts, their minds, and their spirit, so that everything done would be to your glory and not to fulfill our own personal agendas. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially this day we lift up and pray for Mike and Easton, for Rose, Jim, Ryan, Gracie, Chuck, Tom, Steve, Larry, Angie, and all others on our hearts, that God console all who suffer in any way, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people. 
spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. I would invite you to share a sign of peace with those who are gathered around you and also type it into the comments so that we as the gathered community may share Christ's peace this morning. And as you continue to do that, I would just remind you that we still ask that you give some sort of offering to God's ministry this day, whether that is to support St. Paul, which you can do that online by what you're seeing. There is our website or in some other way. So I take, invite you to take this time to not share only share peace, but to make your offering. For reasons I can't quite understand, I really just want to reach through the camera right now and give you all a hug. So please feel that. Let us pray. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with, open, with arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, your, our saving grace. Amen. For those of you who would like to participate in Holy Communion with us, please make sure that you have your home altar set up with bread and wine or those forms of the elements that you can take and join us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please take the bread in your hand and join me, whoever is presiding in your home. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please take the cup in your hand and join me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The things of God for the people of God. Truly come, taste, see that the Lord is good. 
I would invite you wherever you are to commune one another in this time. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. We close today by singing together our last hymn, which is Just As I Am.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.